Good evening, everyone. It is November 27, 2019, the day before Thanksgiving, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, and two days before Black Friday. And everybody celebrates Black Friday. And just a few days further away from Cyber Monday that everybody around the world must be very excited for. So we are finishing our comparison between the LCD-1 and the Sennheiser HD6XX, which is the same thing as the HD 650. We've already done the base, we did the mids comparison this morning, and now we're doing the treble comparison because what I wanna do is get all this done, upload it today so that if you're interested between these two headphones and you've been looking for an actual comparison, uh, some information, worthy information, I hope, then uh, this might be helpful to you. This whole series of comparisons might be helpful. So we're ready to get going. We have both headphones plugged into an A-B switch. The switch itself is plugged into the monolith desktop amplifier, the AAA amplifier. Now, currently set at negative 25 decibels. I have uh, the first headphone, which is the LCD-1 on my head. That is going to be the A headphone in the timestamp in the description section below. The B headphone is always the competitor, and in this case, obviously, it's the 6XX or the 650, which is the same thing as I said. We have three songs queued. We have Skurzo for X-Wings, Flight from the City, and New Light by Kazuki. So let's get started with Skurzo for X-Wings, negative 25 decibels. Here we go. It starts off with horns, and the horns don't have any real air to them. It sounds fairly closed off when it first starts out. So I'm going to increase the volume to negative 20. We're at negative 20. And there are horns that come in and say da 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 da, and they're supposed to be a, a travel spike because that's the energy, and the LCD one really blunts it, so it's not harsh, not peaky, which is good for easy listening, but it's not accurate. I'm going to increase again. Let's go to negative fifteen. Negative fifteen is where I can't even hear myself talk. It's that loud. So this is well over the volume you'd be listening to in the booth if you're doing this professionally and it's still not harsh it's not peaky it doesn't get sibilant in fact there's a lot of energy that's blunted by the lcd one it's rolled off very very quickly i can hear the group sets but i can't hear them distinctly when everything is playing in the mix it's hard to separate the horns from the brass and from the brass from the percussion so everything melds together it becomes a little too integrated so if you're looking for fine-tuned adjustments let me bring this back down to negative 25 uh, when you're trying to look for fine-tuned adjustments it's going to be a little difficult to do that i think because everything sounds so you know pushed together the the frequencies are rubbing up together at the very least and at in worst case scenario they're overlapping over each other so you can't hear the separation now often i talk about hardline separation so by hardline separation i mean you hear a frequency or an instrument and then there's another instrument that has its own frequency and those two are distinct even when they're playing at the same time especially when they're playing at the same time the lcd one has no hardline separation it has never demonstrated hardline separation in any of the tests that we've ever done with this headphone instead it has more of a melding type of effect it it's really reminiscent of a warm headphone now a warm headphone in in my definition is a type of headphone that has closed off sound stage so it's a narrower sound stage it has a boosted bass and a rolled off treble so it sounds warm now the lcd one doesn't have a boosted bass in fact it has a more light bass response we've already talked about that previously but it also have a, has a rolled off treble so what do you get you get this kind of a weird situation where you never get the impact of the bass and you never get the energy of the treble and everything else in the middle has a lot of smoothing effect attached to it like we talked about in the mids comparison in the last video uh, that may or may not be good for you when you listen to music for pleasure but it i don't think it's really helpful for a professional who's sitting there and trying to really fine-tune the mix because if your headphone is not rep reproducing the separation, and if your headphone is not really providing the detail, you might be a little upset, and you might scratch your head and go, okay, so what's wrong? Do I need to add a little bit of boost in this frequency or not? 
look, if, if you're a professional, you tell me whether or not that's a concern for you, if a headphone is not really providing that information to you. Okay, so let's switch to the Sennheiser. I'm going to increase the volume of the Sennheisers from negative 25 to negative uh, 15 to start. And I'll probably have to go up from there. All right, we're ready to go. And here we go. It sounds very, very similar to the LCD one at the very beginning. I'm going to increase to negative 10 to try to get equal volume. And negative 10 sounds very similar to negative 20 on the LCD one. And there's a bit more energy, definitely a bit more energy. When the horns go, ba 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 ba. Sorry about my terrible voice. There's a, there's like a two, three decibels extra energy that just brings out that sparkle. And so we're going to test this again. We're going to go back to about 15 seconds or so, and we're going to listen to that one particular note, and I'm going to switch to the LCD one and listen to it again. Here we go. Yep. Okay. I'm going to decrease the volume to negative 20. And I'm going to put on the LCD one. And let's try that again. Yep. There's a definite uh, difference in about two decibels or so, approximately. And you can, with that two decibel difference, and you might say that's not a whole lot. Well, right, it's not a whole lot. But it is noticeable, and it's that extra sparkle that really brings out the horns. It brings out the brass. It brings out all those instruments that have that energy inherent in them. And the LCD-1 just rolls it off, whereas the Sennheisers doesn't. It allows it to come through. Let's keep playing. We're back at negative 10 decibels on the Sennheiser. No harshness, no peakiness, no ear pierciness, but there's still just a little bit more energy. As far as separation of instruments, let me list for it for a moment. There's a tiny bit more separation with the HD6XX, just a little bit, because the HD6XX has a little bit more soundstage. So you can, you can find some tiny difference when all the instruments are playing, there's a little bit more separation, but it's not a night and day separation. Consequently, I would be happy saying that they sound fairly similar in the respect that there's not a hard line separation in either of these headphones. Okay, so once again, as we have said many times between these two headphones, the Sennheiser has a wider soundstage. It gives a much wider and let's say much, it gives a noticeably wider experience. And it has that additional treble energy. And because it has a slight, teeny tiny slight boost in the bass, you kind of get the rumble effect, just the beginnings of the rumble effect uh, with some of the instruments in the song. Whereas the LCD-1 rolls it off and it sounds really light and then it sounds really muffled because you have all the other smoothing effects going on with the headphones. And I, I'm, the reason I'm harping on this is because this is the type of song where you do expect to have treble. You do expect to have those uh, peaky frequencies, those spikes in, in the song. Now, there are treble-friendly headphones that have way too much energy. You could think of Bear Dynamics, mo all Bear Dynamics, maybe to the exclusion of the T1 second gen. But other than that one, they all have a very, very peaky frequency they're very very harsh sometimes and with skirts so for x-wings it can get super harsh more harsh than the song actually is because it's emphasizing that i would say that the lcd one underemphasizes it because it never brings out those those ener that energy the lcd one is just that temperament just that character the sennheiser on the other hand i think it's much closer to the true representation of the song because the, i start feeling the energy that's supposed to be there without getting fatigued and without uh, feeling as if my ears are hurting all right so let's go to flight from the city and we have the lcd one on we're going to go back down to negative 25 decibels and here we go At the very beginning of this song, there's a uh, the this bench, the piano bench, where the pianist sitting 
starts creaking because he's moving back and forth and it's so muted you could easily miss it i know it's there for a fact because i've listened to the song how many hundreds of times but if you've never listened to it or you don't listen to it very often, you will easily miss it with the LCD one. Now, negative 25 is loud enough that I'm having a hard time listening to my voice. The piano sounds like it has a very, it's got a lingering uh, reverberation. It takes a few moments to die off, which is okay, except for the fact that the narrower soundstage makes it feel as if you're standing within five feet of this piano in your living room. And so you're not really getting the air, you're not allowing, the headphone is not allowing the frequency to resonate naturally. And it doesn't sound open and airy, and it doesn't sound um, as if you were getting the full measure of the piano. Now that sounds all pretty vague, so let me try to put it in, in more concrete terms. The piano is not distorted, it doesn't sound harsh, there's no peakiness, there's no harshness at all. But what it does do is, it sounds so closed off, it's like you're sitting in such a small room, the piano frequency is a bit muddled, just a tiny bit muddled. It sounds, like I said, as if you're standing within five feet of a piano in a, in a living room. I can hear the cello and the piano. The cello has its own very smooth frequency but the piano does rub up against that cello frequency a little bit, and so there is not a hard line separation once again. The cello reverberation seems pretty fast, so it dies off fairly quickly. Very smooth response, no doubt about that. These headphones are very, very smooth. The type of smoothness that you rarely hear with headphones but just not natural. Okay, so let's switch to the Sennheisers. I'm gonna increase the volume to negative 15 for this one, because I think that'll be plenty loud. And let's restart this song. Here we go. Immediately you notice wider soundstage, and that creaking in the bench is louder a couple of decibels louder, more prevalent, more present, more audible. And that extra width in the soundstage makes it sound as if you're not standing five feet of the piano, but instead you're standing like 20 or 30 feet back from the piano. And it doesn't sound muffled all of a sudden. In an AMV test, it sounds much more natural. If you've ever been to a Macy's or a Nordstrom or whatever, or just any high-end well, Macy's not high-end anymore, but a, a middle-class or upper-class shopping center where there's a piano and a pianist is playing. This usually happens during Christmas time. You stand too close to that piano, it's like, man, it's a little uh, too muffled. You stand 20, 30 feet back, and all of a sudden, it just sounds more natural to you. You're getting the piano. You can tell individual notes a lot cleaner and easier. Now, obviously, that's is a big, big room that we're talking about. The Sennheiser doesn't have a presentation like you're in a big room. Again, the soundstage is slightly wider, not a tremendous amount. So you're still basically in that living room, but you're not right up to the piano. Instead, you're about, like I said, 20 feet back. And that's enough of a distance in order to get a bit more natural decay in the piano and a little bit better separation of each note. I would say that the cello is not muddled. It doesn't sound muddy like it did with the LCD-1. There's just enough separations that I can hear those strings. I can just hear the smoothness in that cello with a little bit of energy there that the LCD-1 simply didn't provide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other than that, uh, these two sound very, very close. Okay, so now let's switch back to the LCD-1. <clears throat> I'm bring this back down to negative 25. Okay. 
And the next song is New Light. If you're a regular viewer of my channel and my sound tests, then you already know this, but New Light has a lot of layers and layers and layers of detail. It's one of those songs that's an ambience song. The very beginning, there's this, you know, electric buzz at the, at the very bottom of this pile. The next thing you should hear is the wind rustling through dry grass. The next thing after that, you should hear kids playing in the distance in the background. They should be behind you. There should be spatial awareness like that. The next thing you should hear after that is a piano just very, very softly playing. Then you should hear the crunch, crunch, crunch as a person walks on the dry grass. Then you will hear a guitar. Then you're going to hear some other string instrument. And it just gets more and more and more complex as each element comes in one after the other and then compounds and more and more and more until when you finally get to the crescendo and you have all these elements just playing. Uh, a lot of times what happens with headphones is that they take the, the sound of the kids playing the background and just mutes it. So it's not spatial awareness, it's just quieter. The other thing some headphones do is that they do not provide all the detail in the steps, the footsteps, the crunch, crunch, crunch. My gold standard to this day is the Focal Clear, where I hear 16 counted footsteps from 0 to 45 seconds of this song. I have repeatedly done this test with the LCD-1 from 0 to 1 minute, so I give the LCD-1 an additional 15 seconds for the fun of it. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to find out how many steps I can count. And I count only the steps that I actually hear, not the ones that I know are there somewhere. It's just the ones that I hear. So that's going to be the second wave of this test. The first one, we're just going to get the character of the song with both headphones. All right, so we're ready. And here we go with New Light. That kind of electric buzz is very, very muted, just muffled. The kids in the background are muted, not so distant, just muted. I can hear the footsteps. Initial first one is audible, the next two harder to hear, and then after that, it's really difficult. I can hear the wind rustling through the, uh, to the dry grass, but... It sounds, again, a bit muddled. It comes and goes. It's not particularly audible. Then you have the piano, and the piano sounds very closed off, a pretty claustrophobic sound effect. The guitar is now strumming just here, and the guitar frequency has a very slow decay. With the piano, the guitar, the wind... There's not any hard line separation. Things are just a little melded together. Now the there's a synth that's coming in, and now we're heading to the crescendo. And with the crescendo, it's harder to hear the guitar. It just sounds muddled when the crescendo comes in. The, the thing that this song is really supposed to do is you are supposed to feel as if you're outside. That's the emotion it should evoke. Now, that's individualistic. individualistic. So I really can't use that as a basis to, to explain this performance. What I can say is that the muddiness is pervasive throughout the song on the LCD one. From beginning to end, the details are simply not clear. Now, I could ratchet up the volume, so what, that's what I'm going to do when I now count the number of footsteps. We're going to go back to zero, and we're going to start counting footsteps. I'm going to increase the volume to about negative 22. The reason I'm not going to go any higher is because negative 25 is very loud for this particular song. Almost loud enough for that so that I can barely hear my voice. So negative 22 is plenty loud. You shouldn't have to go loud, loud, loud to hear the detail. There's something wrong in your setup if that's the case or your headphones simply cannot provide the detail. So I'll increase the negative 22 only. So that's an additional three decibels. 
and let's go back here to zero and i'm going to count the number of steps i'll go one two three i'm only counting the ones that i actually hear from zero to uh, 60 seconds here we go one two three four five six okay so i counted six um that's average for this headphone uh the other times i've done the same exact test it's been four to seven max so we're at six so it's, it's well within the uh, error rate here um i only like i said I only counted the ones that i heard so six footsteps within one minute remember the gold standard is 16 within 45 seconds 16 within 45 seconds and we get six all right so let's switch to the sennheiser i'm going to increase the volume to negative 13 to start off and let's restart this song here we go immediately notice a wider sound stage And the kids actually sound like they're in the background somewhere instead of just being muted and right in your ear. They sound, there's a little bit of spatial awareness like they're behind me. I can hear the wind rustling through the grass. I heard the footsteps. I hear the guitar and the piano. The piano has this a, a little bit longer reverberation decay and it doesn't sound muffled. It's not like right in my ear. Instead, it's a layer, like it's behind me somewhere and somebody's playing. In. And now you're getting the a little bit of reverberation from the bass. There's some sort of weird bass element that's involved that you can hear the rumble just, just slightly right underneath something. Now the synth is coming up. The synth is clear undistorted I can hear the guitar very clearly and now as the synth comes up let's find out how it interacts with the guitar it sounds like the synth is interacting with the guitar the same way or very closely with the LCD one so that the guitar is harder to hear with the synth playing full bore which is the same effect I had with the LCD one. So no real difference there. What I can say is that you, I definitely have a sensation of wider soundstage with the LCD one, or excuse me, the uh, Sennheiser. The LCD one has a lower, has a narrower soundstage with this song. All right, so let's go back and now let's test uh, footsteps. Um, we're at negative 13, so I'll increase to negative 11. I don't want to go too loud. And I'm going to count once again the same way. And then let's see how far we get. One, two, three, four. Five. Six, seven, eight. 
Eight. Okay. So I heard eight. Eight footsteps with the Sennheiser. So six on the LCD one, eight on the Sennheiser for in 60 seconds. Once again, the gold standard is 16 in 45 seconds. Um, so very close. So not a big difference here, right? I'm not. I'm definitely not going to comment that the the Sennheiser have significantly more detail retrieval. That that's not the case, but it's a noticeable one when you do an A and B test. Six versus eight. Okay. So now let's talk about conclusions. What do I think overall? Uh, I think that the trouble response is uh, is fairly similar with the LCD one. The only difference, once again, is that there's the two differences. One, wider soundstage, and two, a bit more sp uh, sparkle in the treble region, just a couple of decibels on the Sennheiser. And that separation, that additional sparkle in the treble, either allows for a bit more separation amongst instruments and group sets, and or it allows the character of a particular instrument to come out the way that it was recorded. When you blunt the treble for an orchestral piece like Scherzo for X-Wings, you are not hearing the instrument as it was recorded. That is a fact. Now you could say, well, maybe it was mastered that way. That's not the case. It wasn't mastered that way. It wasn't mastered with bluntness. Because if it had been, then I would hear varying amounts of um, treble spike with other headphones, and that's not the case. With every other headphone, I have that, that treble spike. It, no other headphone that I've tested so far with this song has such a blunted effect other than the NDH-20. That has a pretty blunted effect. But the LCD-1 for an open back headphone doesn't really portray that that treble spike with those particular instruments, the horn, the percussion, the brass, you know, you name it. Simply doesn't provide it. Whereas the Sennheiser has a couple of dB boost extra that does bring out that uh, the detail. Speaking of detail, new light, you know, six versus eight. That may not seem like a whole lot to you. That's fine. It 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 isn't a whole lot, but it is a noticeable difference in my opinion. Neither of these headphones are detail kings. By no measure is the HD650 or 6XX a detail monster. It is nowhere close to the Focal Clear or the HD800S. That's not going to happen. Same thing with the, with the LCD1. Now you might say, look, those are over $1,000 headphones. How can you compare with those? Well, I can compare for two reasons. One, because there's some commentary online that says that the LCD-1 is the best headphone for mixing and mastering up to $1,500. That's what one of my, uh, I think, subscribers mentioned to me yesterday. And I was a little surprised to hear that. I went online and thought, oh, well, there is some commentary to that effect. It's not the case. Then there are people who say that the LCD-1, more people actually than the ones that say it's as good as $1,500 headphones, then there are people who say that the LCD-1 is the best for mixing and mastering under $500. Again, I can't say that. And I don't think it's true. It's not true because it performs, at best, it performs at equally the same as the HD600, or excuse me, the 650. So it can't be the best when there's somebody else that already has the trophy. You can't, you can't be first place if somebody else is already first place. And you can't have two first places. That's not how competition works. Secondly, we've already tested the Sundara. And the Sundara do have more soundstage, have a bit more sparkle, have a little bit more treble energy, have a little bit more bass without getting muddy. Sounds, uh, ha uh, sounds are, the instruments are better separated than with the LCD-1. So even with that comparison the LCD-1 is not the best. So the question becomes, who is saying that the LCD-1 is the best out of the two headphones that we've tested, right? The Sennheiser and the Hi-Fi Man. Who are these people? I'm not asking for names. I'm asking a rhetorical question. 
Who are you if you haven't actually done the A-B test? Yes, perhaps you listened to some of these headphones in the past. And perhaps you put them on and then you put on the LCD one. And you go, whoa, wow, that sounds amazing. But why does it sound amazing to you? The, the question why is more important than your conclusion. Because your conclusion has to be based on specific articulable facts, information. Your particular taste, your preference for the music and the way that it's being presented is a bias that may be hiding the facts that lead you to your conclusion. Does that make sense? So the LCD one sounds very pleasant. It's very, very smooth. I personally like the sound character of the LCD one because it is smooth. It is reminiscent to me of headphones like the uh, Icon, though it's nowhere close to the Icon, let's be clear. It's also a little bit reminiscent of the uh, AudioQuest Nighthawk, which I adore. But night, the Nighthawk is not for mixing and mastering. Nobody should be saying that, and I don't think anybody is. The Icon really should not be used for mixing and mastering. The smoothing effect is so silky smooth. Nobody in their right mind should be using it for mixing and mastering, in my opinion. So why would you use the LCD-1 for mixing and mastering? You can use whatever headphone you want for mixing and mastering. Trust me, I've said this repeatedly, over and over again. You can use any headphone. But for people to go out and say that the LCD one is the best under five hundred dollars, that's not accurate. That's a, that's a that's a misstatement. At the very least, it's a misstatement. And at very worst, for people who should know better and do know better, it's a lie. It's a mischaracterization of these headphones. And those people who are professionals, quote professionals who have given the LCD ones such rave reviews, it is incumbent upon them as professionals lending their opinion to marketing by Odyssey. It is incumbent upon them to justify their position. It's not incumbent on the rest of us, our poor schmucks who spend our hard-earned money on recommendations by professionals. It shouldn't be incumbent upon us to justify it. It should be incumbent on the people trying to sell us the product. That is how fair marketing works. But we're don't, we don't live in a fair marketing system, do we? We live in a system where you offer something to a, quote, professional for free, knowing that they're going to probably give you, or having a very, very strong suspicion, they're going to give you rave reviews because that's how the relationship typically works. If you talk about professional reviewers... And you look at, at their history. You have to always, always look at people's history and put it in context with their credibility. If a professional, <clears throat> excuse me, if a professional reviewer has consistently given rave reviews for name brands, and in conjunction with that, you have information that those professional reviewers get products for free from those same name brands. And on top of that, you find out that those professional reviewers don't really do a test. It's very ambiguous, or it's phoned in, or it's, it's shady. In other words, they hide the, some of the nitpicky problems amongst all this wide text of positives. And I've seen this happen with what Hi-Fi and other websites talking about certain Hi-Fi um, products like the Cord Mojo. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you take all that information together, now you have all these facts about a particular professional. You have to reach a conclusion. You have to use your own logic and determine whether or not this is the type of person you should invest in because that's what you're doing. You're investing in their recommendation. You're believing in what they say. Now you have every right to believe whoever you want. That's totally up to you. My position is you, sh you should be given all information up front. You shouldn't have to hunt for it. You shouldn't have to beg for it. You shouldn't have to have other people who are not professionals like me to do all these tests, to spend our own money to try to figure it out. Why obfuscate the truth? Just be truthful. And if you ask that question ultimately, why is this professional not providing the information? 
Why are they not doing the A-B test? Why are they not talking about specifics? If you ask that question and you are left without an answer, I think you can reach a logical conclusion about whether or not to trust that professional. If you are left without an answer, if, you're, if you have a mystery without an answer, a real mystery without an answer, then it's not your fault. It's not somebody else's fault. It's that professional's fault. And it's up to them to convince you. Odyssey hasn't convinced us because they don't provide charts. They don't provide A-B tests. I mean, no hi-fi manufacturer ever does that, unfortunately. And then on top of that, you have reviewers, professionals, who give such overwhelmingly positive information without giving it in context. For example, as I said in the previous videos, these professionals that we're talking about, audio engineers and mixing and mastering artists and all that, <clears throat> I bet you, I bet you that those individuals have more than the LCD one at their studio, that they're using other headphones to compare their music, to test their music. Of course they are. That they're using, as somebody else pointed out today, very high quality monitors speakers well if that's the case then what does the lcd one do well how does it fit into your workflow how does it complement it answer that question if you tell us look i mixed i mixed and mastered my music using x headphone whatever it is <clears throat> and then i use the lcd one to listen to it for pleasure and it was amazing Hey, that's okay. Now you've given me a little bit of context about how the LCD one fits into your workflow. But if you refuse to provide that information, then it's hard for me as a consumer to trust what you say. Now, this is just my position. I know there are plenty of people who disagree with me. Fine, disagree with me. But my channel is not based upon uh, continuing the hype train to push it along and to push nonsense theories and hypotheses. My channel's purpose is try to break down all this stuff and provide facts as best as I can. And hopefully that's been of some merit to you. It's been of some help. I hope that if you have been in the market and you're looking forward to Black Friday or Cyber Monday or any of the other deals, there are going to be plenty of deals between now and, and the end of the year. In fact, even you're going to get plenty of deals after New Year's. Um, and you're concerned whether you should buy the LCD one or the Sennheiser or the Sundara or any other headphone. I hope that this test is going to be helpful to you. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. It's been informative. Now remember, the LCD one is likely not going to go on sale. They just released it. I don't think that, that Odyssey has any incentive to decrease the price from $400 uh, because of that hype. They're going to cash in as much as they can before they put any, anything on sale. And I rarely ever see Odyssey products on sale. So you're talking about paying full price versus paying it for another headphone that might be comparable or theoretically better than the LCD one at a discount. And that's a decision you have to make. I hope that this has been of some help. I, uh, I hope that my channel has given you some information that you can actually use to make better, more informed decisions in the next uh, month or so. If you like my content, if you like any of my other videos, then I hope that you might consider donating to me a couple of months, a couple of months, a couple of bucks a month on Patreon. I have some very wonderful, giving, very generous patrons who give me a little bit of their hard-earned money once a month. Giving me just two bucks a month would help me save money so that I can buy new and old products and test them for you thoroughly. If you like my content, you're a first-time viewer, you're a regular viewer, but you haven't subscribed, hey, think about subscribing. We are well over 850 subscribers, and I'd like to keep this train, keep, yeah, this train. I want, to, I want to keep this train going. Let's see how far we can go before the end of the year. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you want me to review a product I currently own, hey, there's a comment, uh, not a comment, there's a product review form in the description section below. Click on it, fill it out, submit it, and I'll get to your request as soon as I can. I hope all of you have a wonderful, safe, amazing Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope that you have an amazing end of your week and a very, very pleasant weekend. Take care.